Shalom, family, Most High Christ, bless. Most High Christ, bless. And if you can hear me, throw the wise in the chat, please. All praise to the Most High. Give another two minutes or so, we're going to get started. Can you 
feel my pain? Can you feel my pain? Yeah. And all praise to the most high. Praise the Shalom, family, Most High Christ, bless. Shalom, Most High Christ, bless. Good morning to you, um, Officer Baruch, IUIC, Arkansas, doing a daily bread this morning. All praises to the Most High. So, doing a daily bread. Hey, uh, let me say the title, and then we're going to uh, send our prayers. So, you see the title, it says, Oh, how perfect they are. So, we're going to jump into it, how perfect they are. Um, class was inspired by a Christian on Clubhouse. A Christian on Clubhouse. So, we're going to jump into it. Um, before we do that, I want to send our prayers. Alright, uh, brothers, make sure your head uncovered. Sisters, cover your heads. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your mercy, Heavenly Father. Thank you uh, for allowing us to breathe to see another day. We ask that you continue to walk with us, Lord, as, as we go out uh, to and fro uh, amongst the world, Heavenly Father. We ask that you keep your spirit encamped around us. Keep the spirit of Christ upon us, Heavenly Father, that we might walk in righteous, uh, in righteous ways and be an example to all that see us, Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to groom us to being great people on this earth, Heavenly Father. That chosen seed that you have chosen, we ask that you continue to build us, continue to build our faith, purge iniquity from our minds, purge the spirit of fear from us, Heavenly Father, that we may be strengthened in these last days. Continue to groom the bishops, the deacons, the captains, Heavenly Father. Pour more wisdom out unto them, Heavenly Father, that they may share with us, that we may grow thereby. Continue to, to allow us to... Uh, uh, prosper, Heavenly Father, uh, through thy word, Heavenly Father, being taught on this earth, Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to guide us in righteousness, Heavenly Father, and leave us not, Heavenly Father, and bring swift death and judgment unto those nations that come against thee and us, Heavenly Father. In these last days, allow thy wars to increase, that thy signs may be uh, wondrous of, uh, amongst, of all, amongst us all, Heavenly Father, that you may bring an end to our captivity and a demise uh, and an end to their rulership. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you uh, and want to thank you for all things. And we pray this in, in, in uh, your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hey, so I'll pray to the Most High again. Uh, let me make sure. One second. Okay, okay. I'll pray to the Most High. Hey, all praises. Hey, Shalom, Most High Christ. Bless. Officer Baruch, IUIC, Arkansas. So, hey, I want to get the disclaimer, and then we're going to jump into the topic at hand for our daily bread. Um, bear with me one second. Got to pull this up. Uh, let's see. All right, so the disclaimer reads, we are not a hate group. Uh, we are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat as stated in Leviticus 5 and 1. So all praises to the Most High. All praises, y'all. We made it to another day. Hey, all glory goes to the Most High. Um, so as you see the title at hand is, Oh, how perfect they are. So we're going to get an understanding of what they, the what, what I'm talking about here. Right. Uh, like I said, it was kind of one of those on Clubhouse listening and boom. I was like, man, come on now. We got to bring something out about this. So 
Hopefully it's, uh, this is edifying or it's will uh, for myself and for you guys so we can um, grow thereby. All right. So uh, let's jump into it. Let's go to Romans. Like in most cases, I go here to just paint the picture and to prove that we got to look through the Bible. Because believe it or not, the Christian church says you don't have to. You don't have to. All right, so we're reading the book of Romans, chapter 15, and verse 4. And it reads, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Right, so we're reading the Bible, and it's for our learning. And it's things in the scriptures that build our spirit to give us hope, right? So there's things in the scripture that can build uh, to build us, right? So, but let me get this too, because I know we got a mixed group on on online right now. You may have, you know, brothers that's in the faith that know who they are, but then you also have other people, other nations sneaking in, creepers, unawares, all of the above. Take take heed to what's coming out. All right. So let's get Matthew 11 real quick. Matthew 11, uh, just make this statement. I said, take heed. This is for all of us. This is for us in this truth and for, for us that haven't came in the truth yet that's hearing this, all right? Matthew chapter 11 and verse 15. He that, have an, he that have ears to hear, let him hear, right? So if you got ears, you can hear this. Hear it, understand it, listen, take heed. Right. Let's go. Let's go to it. So God gave us uh, something that other nations don't have, but they understand that is great and they want it. Believe it or not, they want it. God gave us something that other nations don't have. They understand that is great and they want it. Watch this. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's see what I'm talking about. We're going to jump right into what I'm talking about. I ain't going to leave you all scattered. Um, but you probably already know what the title. If you study, you can kind of get a gist of where I'm going. But uh, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse. Uh, we're going to start at verse. Start at verse five. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and excuse me, chapter four and verse five. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land where ye go to possess it. So, before time, he taught us laws, uh, statutes, and judgments. These were taught to us, right? And, and wherever we go, we were supposed to follow these things, to do these things. And if we did it, watch this. Uh, keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom. If we kept those laws, this was going to be our wisdom, right? And your understanding in the sight of the nations. So this was our wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations. In the sight of the nations, this is going to be our wisdom and understanding, right? So, um, which shall hear all these statutes and say, so they were going to hear these, these statutes, these commandments, and they were going to say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So, Right off the bat, they understood. Okay, they hear these. Hey, hold on. This is how you could um, govern a people, a nation. This is how standards are met. This is how uh, you can live forever by applying the laws of God. So the other nations, when they heard it, it was like, oh, that's a great people. That's a wise and understanding people right there. Right? Watch this. Verse 7. 
For what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? He said, for what, what nation is so great that we that nation, y'all, believe it or not, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you're that, that great nation that the, all the other nations knew about, that they understood. When they heard that you were applying the commandments, they were afraid. They said, I, look, I, don't, I can't do it. We can't do nothing to them because their God is going to be with them. Watch this. Let's, I'm going to keep reading. Uh, verse 8. And what nation is there so great? that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day. So we got to understand these laws, oh, how perfect they are. And guess what? They're so righteous. Believe it or not, the other nations know this. They understand this. For some reason, us Negroes can't accept it. We won't understand it, right? We know what we know. The reason us is walking in this faith, we we got we've gotten the understanding of why we can't take heed to these things. What? Why is it troubling? Right? Watch this. Let's jump over. <clears throat> I want to read. I want to read something because we read the curses, right? And um, the curses goes into. If we're disobedient, bad things is going to happen to us. If we reject the laws of God, right? But let's read the blessings. Let's read the blessings. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Woo! That's some good stuff. I don't know about y'all, but that's exciting right there. If we can keep the commandments, we're going to be set high above all nations. Just like aforetime, when we prospered, we applied the laws of God. We were prosperous. We were high. We were, we were put in our own land. We were we were uh, kept safe from other nations coming to us. But when we reject God's laws, now we got to be beat on our backs, knee to our neck, shot down in the street, go to them for food, go to them for money, go to them for understanding of our word, the Bible, go to them for all things. Now we're subject to that. But if we can just keep the commandments, we can rule the earth. Watch this. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So he said, hey, these things are going to come upon us and overtake us. These blessings. That sound better than the country, the world we're living in now. Watch this. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall I be in the and blessed shall I be in the field, right? So these are things that we were gonna be blessed with, right? Um, let me uh, let me jump down real quick. So this is something we must understand. Watch this verse, uh, twelve, and the Lord shall open unto us, unto thee, His good treasure, the heaven. To give the rain of the land and in his season and bless all the work in thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. I don't under, we got to understand. We Look, if we was to apply God's laws, right? It's many. I just skipped down. It's many. But he said, hey, that was going to be a point where we were going to lend to them. They were going to have to borrow from us. They need something. They're going to come to us. This sounds very familiar. And we're going to get that story. All right. Um, I'm going to keep reading. Uh, 
Now I'm gonna drop this. I'm gonna drop this. So we understand that we were gonna uh, end. Up, we were gonna have a point where we would lend to the nations, and they would borrow from us. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go back, because believe it or not, the whole Bible was a, based off of applying the commandments and believing in God, applying the commandments, and the faith of Christ. It's throughout the whole scriptures, right? Faith. Apply the commandments. Faith. Apply the commandments. Faith. Let's go to Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter chapter 39. Right? Um, I, I probably will jump back. Let me see. I want to jump back. Hmm. I probably, let me see. Let me see. No, I'm just going to read this. Genesis 39 and verse 1. We're going to start here. And it says, and Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of, of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him out of the hands of the, uh, out of the, bought him of the hand of the Ishmaelites, which he brought him down thither. Right, so this is after the the dealings that Joseph had with his brothers, and they sold him off to some merchants. Now he's being sold to the guard, right? So he now he's being sold to an Egyptian god a uh, guard. Um, verse two, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master. The Egyptian. So, right off the back, it's showing you that Joe was a prosperous, excuse me, Joseph was a prosperous man. He, obviously, we don't see it here, but we gonna, it's showing that Job, he applied the commandments. Right, hold that. Hold that. I'm going to prove it somewhere else, but I want to just get you to understand. Let's read Joshua real quick. We know this scripture, Joshua chapter 1. Let's read it. You're like, hold on, man. Don't show he kept the commandments. I'm going to prove it. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This is the book of the law that shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to their, their all that was written therein. Right, so okay, the Bible, you say the Bible wasn't written then, right? But there were words put in place. There, there was there was things that were said that was accounted for. Our forefathers accounted for these things, right? And and it says here that thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. We know the commandments does this. The commandments do this, right? So it had to have been something he was keeping, which was called the commandments. To make him prosperous in the eyes of even the Egyptians. And even when he was dealing with them over there. Right? Watch this. Let's go back to uh, Genesis. Maybe that wasn't uh, uh, in, uh, good enough for you. But I'm going to pull it. I'm going to prove it. Watch this though. Um, I want to jump around because I don't want to do all this. So we read about jo jo uh, Joseph being prosperous. Right? And we jump down. Let's go. Let's jump over. Let's skip it. So um, now we go into when Job was in prison. So Job was a prosperous man. Uh, the Egyptian, the Pharaoh's wife tried to set him up. She took his garment. She really set him up. She tried to set him up to have sex with him. He, he ran from her. And um, she took his garment off of him. And... You can't look. He got she got the garment. So now it's like, okay, I believe her. She got the garment. So he ended up getting put to jail, right? Put in jail. So now we read, let's read an account of him in jail. Let's read this. Uh Genesis chapter 40 and verse 1. Now y'all keep in mind, keep in mind the title declares, Oh, how perfect they are. I'm painting something here. I'm building this something, right? Just stay stick with me. Uh verse 1. 
Genesis 40 and verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that the butler and the king, the kings, the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their Lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in a, in the ward, in ward, in the house of the captain of the guard unto the prison and the place where Joseph was bound. So this place where the, those prisoners went, Joseph was bound there as well. Right. Uh, let me jump up. Let me jump to the, the, the chapter before 39 and at the end here. 39 and verse 20. And Joseph master took him. And put him into the prison, a place where the king, ye king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in a, in the prison. But the Lord was with God, with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison com commit, uh, committed to Joseph's hand. All the prisoners that were in the prison, that whosoever, that whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it, right? So he was the, what do you call it? The, day, the taskmaster in the prison. That's what he was, right? Verse 23, the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it prosper. So the prison, even the keeper of the prison was like, I ain't got to worry about nothing because Joseph, Lord is with him. They look, this was understood that Joseph's Lord was with him and he was going to prosper. Right now, Joseph Lord is the Lord of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Right. Which is our Lord, which is the God of creating the, the creation, right? So when we jump down at verse, uh, in chapter 40, now you got these guards that were kicked out by the Pharaoh, right? They were put in this same prison that Job was overseeing, that Joseph, I keep saying Job, that Joseph was overseeing, right? So we're going to read verse 4. Uh, Genesis 40 and verse 4. And Joseph, the captain of the guard, excuse me, and the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them. <clears throat> and he served them. And they continue a season in war. So they were there for a minute, right? And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream. But the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them and beheld. They were sad and they asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house saying, wherefore look, wherefore look ye so sadly today. So now Joseph come in and he see him. They're sad, right? He's like, why y'all looking so sad? What's going on with you? And they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said, so they need an interpreter, right? And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And Joseph was like, hold on, hold on. Don't the interpretations, the understanding of dreams, the wisdom come from God? He had to let him know. Right? No, he ain't talking about the Egyptian guy. He's talking about the, our God, right? The God of Israel. And then he read, and then I'll read here. It says, and the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said unto him, in the dream, behold, thy wine. I don't wanna, I'm not going to read all this. So now he's telling me his dream, right? And all, all entails in his dream. So his dream comes to pass. I read verse 21. 
And he restored the chief butler and his butlership again. And he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet did the chief butler remember, yet not did the chief butler remember, but forgot him. So when you read through this, Joseph uh, explained the dreams and the butler was going to live. The butler was going to be restored and the baker was going to get put to death. So it came to pass from the wisdom of the Most High God that he gave to Joseph. These things came to pass. And it was, it was older man. He was like, hey, Joseph was like, hey, y'all just, you got to remember me. You will get restored. You got to remember me. But the butler didn't, right? So let's keep going. So it's going to come full circle though, right? Eventually it's, it's going to. You, you have faith in the Most High. The things that were stated in the scriptures, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. We're going to live forever if we apply the commandments, right? All of the things we hear, the Romans 15 and 4, the things are written aforetime, time, was written for our learning. It's good. It's for good hope, right? So let's go. Genesis 41. I'm just doing a backstory here, right? I'm doing a backstory. Paint the picture. Genesis chapter 41 and verse 1. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. So now Pharaoh, the head African in charge at that time, right? <laughs> the head African, he had a dream. And his dreams was crazy, right? Goes into the the seven plenty years goes into the uh them having famines and success right so so I'm gonna jump down to verse eight to verse eight so he had these dreams and the Egyptian was said this here and it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the musicians of Egypt. And all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream. But there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. So no one, none of those could interpret his dream. Right? Because when we read the chapter before, that was wisdom of God. God was the only one that can, can give the wisdom. And he wasn't giving it to no Joe Blow other nation. He was giving it to his people, his chosen people. Right? So verse nine, and he spake to the chief butler, then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh saying, I do remember my faults this day. And Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in the ward in the, in the captain's guard in the house, both me and the chief baker. And then, a, and I dreamed a, a dream and one night I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant of the captain of the guard. We told and we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams. So now the the butler remembers what Joseph told him. He said, "Oh, came full circle here. The hey and he told it this into the Pharaoh, like, hey, I'm, these dreams, this man was able to interpret it, right? So, uh, let me jump down. Mm. So, after these dreams, right, were uh, explained, Pharaoh was like, this, this man right here, let me see. Uh... Verse 37, verse 37. And after uh, these dreams were interpreted, Pharaoh told Joseph his dreams, they were interpreted. Watch this. Verse 37, Genesis chapter 41 and verse 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and all the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such one as this, um, as this is a man whom the spirit of God is. 
So he's asking his servant, man, who we going to find if the spirit of God is? Because uh, Joseph was telling him, you're going to need a man to oversee this. Who we going to find that's wise and understanding? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God have showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. So you got to understand something here. Um, let me make sure I don't want to jump ahead out of the game. Right, I'm on it. Uh, so you got to understand here, right? So the Pharaoh recognized that God was with Joseph. He told him the understanding of the script, uh, the the interpretations of the dream. He's a wise man. He understood it was wisdom with this this person here, this this Hebrew, right? This Israelite. He's an Israelite at the end of the day because he's of Jacob. Jacob was Israel. So he said, "Hey." Let me see. He um he gave him uh let me read on right here. Verse so discreet, verse 40. And thou shalt set and thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in thy throne, only in the throne will I be greater than thou. So he gave Joseph everything. He said, only in the throne, I'm greater than you. Other than that, you got, you got, you got it. You're going to rule over everything. Nobody can come against you. Right? And verse 8, uh, 42. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it up on Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put gold chains about his neck. So now he transferred rulership over to Joseph. Watch this. Let's go to Maccabees. All right. So I told you like, I, I, or I stated that Joseph kept the commandments. He kept laws. He was faithful. He was faithful. Let's go to Maccabees. First Maccabees chapter two. If I can find it. Let's read. Um, Chapter 2 and verse 53. First Maccabees chapter 2 and verse 53. Joseph, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment and was made Lord of Egypt. Egypt. Y'all understand what's happening here? What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is. These perfect things, oh, how perfect they are. It's the laws of God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it out, but the laws of God are perfect. And when you're walking in the ways of the Lord, right? You're, you're applying his commandments. He give you rulership. He give you dominion over nations. Even when you're in the midst of nations, you have some type of safety, right? We got to understand that. The laws are perfect. They're perfect. Watch this. Let's go to Sirach. Let's go to Sirach. Chapter 44. Let me tell you, these, these things, um, let me see, let me see. 44 and verse, what I want, one. Let's start there. Sirach chapter 44 and verse one. And it reads, let us now praise famous men and our fathers that begat us, just like Joseph, just like um, Jacob, Abraham, all of these men aforetime, right? That begat us. The Lord hath wrought great glory by them. Through his great power from the beginning, such as did bear rule in their kingdoms. Men renowned, their see, these men bear rule in their kingdoms. It says, men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declare prophecies. Leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people, wise and eloquent in their instructions. 
So our famous men was wise men. They were eloquent. They knew how to talk to people. They knew how to deal with the people. These were wise men of before time. But where did that wisdom come from? Where did it come from? We read it in, in Deuteronomy chapter 4. The commandments of God. And the other nations recognized that. These laws, these commandments are perfect. And what it does is it makes us perfect. It makes us better than every other nation. It makes us, we're greater than them. Not only, not just because we are chosen above them all. No, because God gave, not just that, but because God gave us something that's above everything they got, which is the laws and commandments. We got to understand that. This is a beautiful thing. Open your mind to this. This is very beautiful, right? It's going to come. Let's see. Let's go to uh, Psalms. Let's see. I say perfect. How perfect are they? Still make it clear. Make it plain. That's what somebody's saying right now. Let's, let me see. Let's see. Uh, Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The laws of God is perfect. That's what's perfect. We gotta we 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 know that as Israelites, as us pushing this faith, us in this truth. But we really gotta examine that thing. Everything is set up. If we can follow the laws of God, that perfect thing, we're gonna be all right. We're gonna be good. But if we didn't, death, destruction, all of the above that we hear about will come, will come to us. Right? So the laws of God is perfect. Let's go back to Sirach. Let's read up chapter 34. Or a verse in chapter 34. Uh, 34. Sirach. Um, chapter 34 and verse 8. It says, The law shall be found perfect without lies. And wisdom is perfection. To the faithful mouth. To a faithful mouth. So it says the laws are found perfect without lies. The laws of God are perfect. And the perfection of uh, and the wisdom is per and wisdom is perfection to a faithful mouth. This is this is beautiful right here because where you get where you get wisdom from? The laws of God. Those that are applying it. It says, uh, it says, wisdom is perfection to the faithful mouth. Those that's being faithful, this is showing, this allows you to show your perfection, right? The, the wisdom comes out of you. Watch this. This made me think of something right here. Because it says, it says, wisdom is perfection in the faithful, uh, in a faithful mouth, right? It says, the laws of God are found perfect. Without lies. Watch what the laws of God do to you. It allows you to become. Uh, let's get Matthew. What I want. Chapter 5. Remember the other nations see that we keep God's laws. This thing is beautiful to us. Alright. Matthew chapter 5. And verse. Verse 13. Uh, verse 12, I read verse 12. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 5 and verse 12. Rejoice and be exceeding, be exceeding glad, for great is the reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. It says, be glad. Though we're going through things, right? Be glad. Our forefathers went through it. Guess what? The great reward is in heaven. The great reward is in heaven. Verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. So I had to slow it down there because we are applying the laws of God, which is perfect, with no lies, gives you wisdom, those that are faithful, right? All of a sudden, you start realizing that we, of course, we know we get, we build confidence, all of the above. But 
According to Deuteronomy 4 and 6, the other nations seeing it, they know it. The, the laws of God separate us from everybody because it allows us to be the salt of the earth. We know we got that, that flavor, right? We know it's us. Believe it or not. Watch this. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt of the earth, excuse me, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savior, savor, right? So if the salt has lost the flavor, if it lost it, right? Meaning if you ain't applying the commandments, <laughs> whence, uh, wherewith shall thou be salted? You got to have the commandments. Watch this. It is this fourth good for nothing. You you good for nothing if you God chosen people and you ain't keeping the commandments. You supposed to be the salt of the earth. You supposed to have a standard that's different that other nations be like, oh, that's a great people. That your people be like, what they doing? What they talking about? Yeah, I want to do that. That your people may wake up. We got to understand this, right? But, uh, I'm going to keep reading, but to cast out and to be trodden down under the, my feet. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on an high, on a hill, cannot be hid. So the Bible says we are the light of the world. Watch this, Proverbs chapter 6. How are we the light of the world? Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. Oh, how perfect they are. These perfect laws. And then when you apply them, you gain understanding of the scriptures. You can go precept upon precept. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. And reproofs and it for, and a proof of instructions are the way of life. So it says the commandments is a lamp and the law is the is light. The law is light. So us being the light of the world, we have to be applying something. The laws of God. The laws of God, right? So let's go back. Well, let's jump to Psalms. Ch Psalms chapter 37. Chapter 37 and verse 20, I think I want. Uh, let me make sure. 30. Ch Psalms chapter 37 and verse 30. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. And his tongue talketh of judgment. So the righteous, they going to move and they going to speak wisdom. Just like Joseph, he spoke the wisdom. He gave the understanding of the, the dream. And it was in that wisdom, it was like, hey, um, it showed judgments. If they don't, if you don't like, hey, you, some stuff going to happen at the end of the day. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't uh, do take heed to what's, what I'm telling you that the most I gave me, everything you got is going to be destroyed. So we got to understand that we're following the same thing, just like David, just like uh David speaking here, just like uh, King Solomon, all the prophets aforetime, the wisdom that they showed, the understanding, the way they speak, we got to be the same way, eloquent in our speech, uh, speech, right? And in instruction, that's like we read in, uh, in Sirach, right? So that's how we have to move. Let's go. Chapter uh, Revelations. Revelations. So the laws of God, right? Watch this. And this is how you know the Christians, they don't believe. They don't believe in the Bible. They out for your money. I'm going to prove it too. Uh, Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, that they may enter in through the gates into the city. So blessed are they that keep the commandments. Blessed are they that keep the commandments, right? So we see, um, you know, you go through stuff, you apply the commandments, you know you're getting the mercy, the most I show the mercy, right? 
and maybe you think you had it in the world. It ain't the same. That 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 success ain't the same as the success of you coming in this truth, ultimately receiving the kingdom of heaven, right? It's a difference. But what I'm proving here, what I proved here is that the commandments are perfect. Oh, how perfect they are. So why should we do away with them? How are they done away with? That's why I was saying the thought, like the dude was stating some stuff. I was like, why are you saying, how, how did, where you get this thought from? The laws are not done away with. They were kept in the beginning. They kept throughout the Bible. We just read from the front to the back. We read from in the middle to the back. The laws are here to stay. We're going to prove it though. But let's see the Christ, the Christian rep. Let's see what the Christians, the three, the, this is the Christian, Christian, excuse me, thought. And the, the Christians meaning, yes, you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans that's following the ways of the white man, right? You, you're following, you're cleaving it to them. You are subject to them, right? Watch this. They know something. The white man knows something. So he set up something called Christianity, the churchism, Catholicism, Pentecostals, Catholics, Baptists, all of the all of the above your name, right? Jehovah Witness, all of those. They understand this. Let's go to uh Judith. Judith chapter five and verse twenty. The book of Judith, chapter five and verse twenty. Now therefore, my Lord and Governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. And let us go up and we shall overcome them. So if we were to sin against God, this was going to be our ruin. Just like when you read in the book of Judges, right? If you, if you read the book of Judges, right, you understand certain things of what I'm going to say. In Judges, it was times where we kept the commandments. We had a judge over us. We kept the commandments. We prospered. But then the Negro left the commandments and then there was uh, nations over us. Nations whooping our tails in wars. Right? But then we, we kept the commandments. And then God sent a judge and we good. Or he sent the judge and we kept the commandments and we were good. And then we broke the commandments. If you look, read Judges, it's crazy. It's up and down. We was doing this. We did that. We did this. We did that. It was back and forward. That's showing, That's a prime example of if we apply the commandments, if we didn't apply it, they can rule over us. Just like we read here. Watch the next part. Verse 21. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by. Lest their Lord defend them and their God be for them. And we become a reproach before all the world. So they understood if we kept the commandments, that they couldn't do nothing. That, that, that our Lord would be with us, just like he was with our forefathers. Just like in Judges, when we kept good, when the, when the judges came and over, there were overseers of us, we kept good. We kept the ways of the Bible. We prospered. We were good. So it was. this is what we must follow. So the point I'm getting out of this, though, is the other nations know if we keep if we don't keep the commandments, they can rule over us. So they set up the Christian church in 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 uh in our communities. They set it up that we can fail, that we can be subject. Oh, you can serve another God. Oh, you're going to worship on a Sunday. Or you're going to follow Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, uh, all of the above. Because under the Christian church is a big umbrella and you can follow every God under the Christian church. And they call that no, uh, non-denomination. <laughs> or it's really called Catholic or it's called whatever because you're following all these other gods. Greek gods, all, all kind of gods, sun gods. We got to understand that, right? So the Christians, they under they want us to go, the Christi, Christianity want us to go a different way from God. They understand that these laws, these perfect laws that's not done away with, 
will keep us safe if we apply them. They also understood that if we were disobedient, that they would have ruled over us. All right? Let's go to Micah. So we got pastors out there today, just like the brother that was on Clubhouse, man. The one that was on Clubhouse. And believe it or not, he doing this. He doing this. They ain't teaching for us. Ain't no way they scattering the sheep. Let's go to Jeremiah first. Jeremiah chapter, uh, uh, what I want? Chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 22. Let's see here. Now, 20, 23. Jeremiah 23 and verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. So he said, woe be unto them that scatter the sheep. Though, how, what do they, how do they scatter them? They say, yeah, you can follow. Uh, you don't have to keep the Sabbath. This is what they teach. The laws are done away with. Uh, uh, what are some of the other things they say? The laws are done away with. Uh, the law is bondage. You ain't got to keep the laws. They bondage. The commandments is bondage. Listen, you, you don't have understanding. You don't know what you're talking about. We have to apply the laws of God. Right? So they, they stray us away. Watch this. Verse, tw verse 2. Therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my sheep. Ye scattered my flock and have driven them away and have not visited them. But behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, said the Lord. So the Lord is going to repay those, those pastors or pastors that scatter the sheep. Right? Micah. Let's go to Micah chapter 3. Micah chapter 3 and verse 11. The book of Micah chapter 3 and verse 11. The heads thereof judge for reward. The priests thereof teach for hire. The prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will I lean upon, will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord amongst us? None evil can come upon us. So their pride is high. The Lord with us. No evil can come upon us. But meanwhile they. Which is false. But meanwhile they. they, they uh, scattering the sheep. Right. They're, uh, they're teaching for hire. Meaning. God said. Let there be light. And whatever they be saying. Man, I haven't been in the Christian church forever. Man I don't even know. They, they, whatever they saying, right? They, all these lies they spewing that the laws are done away with, right? Because they, if they can say, if I can say, look, think about this. What better way to make money, right? <laughs> Which is, this is the most profitable way the Christian church lied to us because we got, you got a man that's buying a $60 million jet to fly to the moon. You got to think about it. They making money. They making billions and billions of dollars every year, right? Off of us, off of the Israelites, off of the, off of the wickedness that they push. They teach for hire. They teach for hire. That's a, that's the way they make money. It's wicked as heck. God is against that. He said, destruction to you to scatter my sheep. Destruction to you, right? Um, I'm losing time. I got scriptures left. Let me speed it up. He said, destruction to you that's scattering my sheep. Let's go to uh, Romans. Romans 7. Hopefully y'all with me, man. If you're with me, give me a Y in the chat. I hope I ain't lose you. Well, lose you, right? The purpose of what I'm saying is, oh, how perfect the laws are, right? The laws are perfect. How are they done away with when they're perfect? When they were meant to make us greater than every nation, when they were meant to make us succeed above the nations or even in our captive state to be above of law, uh, above the nations. And we kept the commandments. We got to understand that. We can't walk away. We got to keep the commandments, right? Watch this. But the Christian church lies to us. 
They say, hey, you ain't got to do it. Think about it. Look, you can come as you are. You all right. Stay in your lust. Stay in your sin. Look, I'll pay. Look, I'm going to pay you because you say I can do what the hell I want to do. Let me pay this man 10% every 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 week. I'm going to pay you 10% every week because you say I'm, you ain't going to judge me. You ain't going to say nothing to me. That's wicked as hell. We got to understand that. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. And we're going to read verse 7. What shall we say then? Romans 7 to 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Is the law sin? Is it, is it wicked to keep the laws of God? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law has said, Thou shalt not covet. So no, the law is not sin. If it wasn't for the law, we wouldn't know what sin is. That's what, that's what Paul is saying right there. We wouldn't know what sin is. Just like that fool that was on Clubhouse. I keep bringing it back to him. The fool on Clubhouse said, the, he said the transgressions of the sin was the transgressions of the law. This, you got to be dumb to go around that. If you understand that, how you saying the, the laws are done away with, but you got to keep the law. What are you saying? It's confusion. These things, the laws is perfect to establish thou shall not covet. So you can stay out of lust. Because your eyes see, oh, I got to have that's Man, she got a nice body. Oh, the Coke bottle shape. Oh, I got to get that. Nah, that's somebody else's wife, bro. Or you you got to be married. You're over here lusting after this woman. Or the sister. Oh, he got a nice body. Scrolling through Instagram pics of the dudes with the buff chest. Thou should not covet. That's, that's a lustful spirit on you. Don't covet after it. You good. You got a husband at the house. Or you need to work on your, building your spirit so that you can find a husband. But if you coveting, if you lusting, you in sin. The laws are made perfect to govern us. Only the black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the Negroes, the niggas, don't understand this. They don't understand it. But the nations understand it. If they are in sin, we can rule over them. But if they good, they fall in the ways, we can't do nothing. Oh, this is a great people. A wise and understanding people. The nations understood that. But for some reason, we don't. We're scattered by these pastors, man. They're lying to us. They lying to, they're lying to us, right? So let's continue. Proverbs, let's jump down. Let's jump down to verse uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Watch what the Bible says about the laws. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. The laws are good. Right, the brother said Pastor Dion. It's Dion with a did it with an E. D-E-O-N. Not the real Dion, but the fake Dion. That brother was simple as hell. Man, I wanted to, I wanted to say something to him. I wanted to say, man, if you yeah, anyways, the laws of God is, is the, and the commandments are holy, just, and good. Holy, just, and good. Why would you do away with that? Something that's perfect, something that's holy, it's going to make you holy if it's holy. It's going to make you good if it's good. It's going to make you a just man, a just sister if it's good. If it's, if it's, this is something that we must follow. Let's take heed to this. The laws can't be done away with. They're perfect. Right? Watch this. Psalms chapter 147. Psalms 147. Let me get there real quick. And we're going to read. 19. We know. Let's see. Let's see who, the laws, who, who are the laws for. These perfect things. We got to understand. This is perfect. So we got to move a certain way, Israel. We, we. Us Israelites in this truth. 
Uh, Psalms chapter 147 and verse 19. Uh, where am I? 147 verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So those words he showed to Jacob, think about this. He showed it to Jacob and to Israel, right? That's us. He showed these words to us. So only for us, he only gave it to us, right? Watch this. He have not dealt so with any other nation. As for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. That's something to praise. Oh, how perfect they are, these laws. And he gave them to us. You got to praise God for that. All praise to the most high God. Because this law, these laws can govern a nation. Why do you think they use the judicial system? You go to the to uh to court to see a judge based off of laws that they made, some of the laws that they made here, but laws that they pulled out of the Bible. Oh, you're not supposed to kill. So either you're gonna get put to death by their hand. Or they're going to put you in jail for life. Well, not for longer because you know they're changing up stuff now. But they follow this system here. But they don't understand. God said it wasn't, it wasn't dealt. It wasn't given to them. It wasn't for no other nation. It was for you Israelites. We got to understand that, man. We got to. And we got to teach our people because pastors like D.E. O-N going to lie to you. He going to lie to you in your face. He going to say certain things. He going to condemn himself in his own words. He going to lie to every eight, eight plus a uh, thousand people on the uh, clubhouse. He going to lie to them. You, you can't make this up. You can't make it up. Watch this. Um, let's jump. Let's go to uh, Baruch. So these laws are perfect, right? These laws were given to us. The judgments was given to us, us to understand. If you broke this commandment, the judgment for this, it was only given to us. Other nations, they don't have the luxury of this. They don't, they're not going to be, because if they had it, they would be a great and wise people. No, God gave it to us, the Israelites. Baruch chapter 3. Baruch chapter 3. And we're going to read verse 36. Baruch chapter 3 and verse 36. He have found out all the way of knowledge and have given it unto Jacob his servant and to Israel his beloved. So, the, so God gave the Bible, the laws, the commandments to Israel. And they said this was knowledge given to us. The knowledge of it, the understanding of the Bible was given to Israel. Nobody else. That's some good stuff, y'all. That's some good stuff. Soak that in. Think about it. That's going to allow us to live forever. To live forever. Go. Let's go back to Sirach real quick. We're going to come back to Baruch. Let's go back to Sirach, chapter 44. And we're going to read what I want. Verse 17. Watch what the laws do to us. Sirach chapter 44 and verse. Oh damn, I'm far away. Verse 17. Nor was found perfect and righteous in the time of wrath. He was taken in exchange for the world. Therefore was left. A remnant unto the earth when the flood came. The point I wanted is Noah was found perfect. Noah kept the laws. God said, hey, follow my ways. He, the laws that were passed down from his forefathers, he kept it. And guess what God said? Hey, you, take you and your family. Make this ark. Get in this ark. Take these animals, all the things, the creeping things on the earth, all of this. Take this in this ark, and I'm going to save you. And we got to understand, that ark... This is a similitude. This is a metaphor. It's coming back. Christ is coming. Christ is going to save us. And all those that's left behind, 
They're going to burn. It's going to be in the lake of fire. Where you, where you want to be at? We got to think about it. We got to examine this thing. I want to live forever. You, you should want to live forever, right? Let's follow the thing that is perfect. The laws of God. So we can be righteous in the sight of the Most High. So he can save us, right? So Noah was a perfect man. Watch this. Sirach chapter 17 and verse 11. Sirach chapter 17 and verse 11. Besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. The law of life for an heritage. The, that God gave us this, the laws of life for inheritance. He gave us knowledge, the understanding of it. This is beautiful. He gave it to us. No other nation was given that. No other nation, right? Watch this. Let's go uh, to, I think I want to go back to Baruch. Yeah, let's go back to Baruch. Now, let me jump. Let's jump to Sirach 20, 24 and verse 23. Uh, we're going to start at verse 22. Sirach chapter 24 and verse 22. He that obeyeth me shall never be confounded. And they that work by me shall not do am amiss. Verse 23. All these are the book of of the covenant. Let me read that again. All these are the book of the covenant of the most high God. Even the law which Moses commanded for an heritage unto the congregations of Jacob. The laws of God. We obeyed these things. We weren't going to be confounded. Nobody was going to come against us. And this was going to be a law. Uh, this was our heritage. This was the heritage that that was given to us. The standard that we must live by. And this standard, the other nations recognized that this will make us a great and wise people. They said, hey, that's a great and wise people. Those are applying the commandments. Verse 24. Faint not to be strong in the Lord, that ye may confirm, that he may confirm you. Cleave unto him, for the Lord Almighty God. Is God alone. And beside him. There is no other savior. 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 So we got to understand that God. He's the only savior. There's no other savior besides him. So we got to recognize. That we keep the commandments. We ain't got to worry about being confounded. Uh, we ain't got to be faint hearted. We got to be strong. This is what we must be. Baruch 4 and 1. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. And it reads, this is the book of the law. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endure forever and the law that endure forever. This is the book, this book right here. The Holy Bible is the commandments is the law and the laws endure forever. We read through the Bible. It gives us hope like we read in Romans. That, hey, you apply these commandments, you can live forever. This is the same thing it's saying. Watch this. All they that keep it shall come to shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So if we keep in the laws of God, we're going to live. Live forever. Because the laws of God endure forever. We're going to live forever. But those that walk away will surely die. You're going to die. You're going to die. It is what it is. So those pastors, it behoove you to repent. Dion, D-E-O-N, repent. Repent, brother. Come on, we got to repent these last days, right? So we got to go hard in this, y'all. This, this is our Bible. This is our word. And we got to do something. Go to 2 Corinthians. We know the laws are perfect. We know that we can be blessed with the laws of God. We know that... Christ kept the laws and he was perfect. We know that the apostles, the prophets, Paul, all of the above kept the laws. They were perfect. Our forefathers, Joseph, Jacob, A. Isaac, Abraham, perfect, right? King David, Solomon, 
kept the laws. We got to keep the laws, but we got to do something too. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. Uh, verse 4. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we recognize that our weapon of warfare is not carnal. For a pastor to get on clubhouse and say the laws are done away with. Which he's saying. Because it, it, it's confusing if you're not saying this. Then I'm, I'm really confused. He said the laws are done away with. That means you can go out and rape somebody. You mean you can go out and kill somebody. You can go out and rob and steal. But you got to bear the laws of the land. Does not the laws of God. And does not the laws of the land. Get that from the laws of God? Does not the God does not God laws trump the laws of the land? Even though they some of the things may be similar. This, the understanding. Look, the, the the this warfare is crazy. You got coon Negroes, that's what he is, a coon. Coon. Come on there and do that. Same person, man. This is like a dude we have on the street at camp. It, 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 he might be his brother. I don't know. <laughs> he got the same thing. We ain't the Jews. How? How are we not the Jews when Deuteronomy 28 goes heavy into the Israelites? How are we not the Israelites? Explain it. You can't. But this is how you know our weapon of warfare is not carnal. It has nothing to do with the skin tone, the, the, the guns. This warfare is nothing about that. This warfare is to make you think in your mind that you not an Israelite. That you ain't got to keep the laws. All you got to do is believe. All you got to do is chill. Uh, you can do whatever you want to do. Do you. But pay me my money. That's what they. This is what the church teaches. This warfare is heavy because it's pushed everywhere. And millions of our people, if not upon millions are following this way, right? Two thirds to be exact are going to stick and stick in the wickedness. But watch this. Our weapon of warfare is not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down through God to the pulling down of strongholds, which is Christianity. That stronghold is on our people, right? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So this is what we got to do. We have to bring everything into the obedience of Christ, right? The understanding, applying the commandments. We got to cast down the lies. No, you can't follow Halloween that's coming up. No. Thanksgiving, no. Your birthdays, no. Columbus Day, whatever, Memorial Day. Uh, you can't keep these. No, this is of the world. Valentine's Day, Christmas. We got to cast it down. The laws are done away with. We got to cast that down. That don't even make sense. Watch this, Revelations. How does that make sense when the Bible says this? Revelations chapter 12 and verse 14. I'm sorry, 14 and verse 12. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. How is the commandments done away with? How? When we got to keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. It don't make sense. We got to cast down the lies on this earth. Us as Israelites in this truth that understand who we are and what we must do. We got to cast down the lies. Israel, it's our job to cast down the lies. The laws of God is perfect. They can't be done away with. They're not done away with. Why would there be? They govern us in this world today. That's why everybody ain't dead right now. Laws of God. The laws of God. All right. Let's go. Baruch chapter 4. Yeah, I can't forget about it. New Year. New Year, yeah. That's wicked too. We got to cast it all down. 
You got to root it up. Baruch uh, chapter 4. Us, us in this truth, y'all, we got to go hard. We're in the last days. Let's go hard. Let's bring, look, think about it. Me and, uh, me and the officer was talking. Me and Officer Mayo. Shout out to Officer Mayo. Um, we were talking yesterday. We was at camp. And we was like, damn, it's seven oh it's seven oh four. And the sun was damn near down. I don't I said I don't remember in the previous years the sun been down at seven oh four on October the eleventh. Usually like later later in October like late to going towards November, the sun go down. We yeah, we can see it later like that, but seven oh four like, dang, the time is speeding up, y'all. We went through tabernacles. We done went through the new moon. Quick, the time is speeding up. Let's go hard in this truth. Let's go hard, man. Do the uh, Baruch chapter 4 and verse 28. Because some of us, we went in the Christian church. We went hard for it. We gave the 10 percent. We gave 10 percent. We made the pastor rich. The pastor went home that, that Sunday. He went home with 10 bands. He went home with 20 bands. Hmm. Watch this. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 28. For as, as, for as it was your mind to go astray from God, being returned, seek him 10 times more. When we casting down these laws... Uh, of the world, the, the the wickedness of the world, we got to go 10 times harder for the Most High God. We got to go 10 times harder in this truth. We got to magnif we got to magnify like Christ did. He magnified the law. We got to magnify the law. We got to go out and say boldly, teach boldly. We must keep the laws of God because the Christian church ain't going to do it. Your boy D-E-O-N ain't going to do it. T.D. Snakes ain't going to do it. Clefo, take your dollar, ain't going to do it. All of these pastors in these, these churches are not going to teach God laws. We got to do it. The real prophets. We, we got to do it. We got to put boots on the ground. Sisters, you got to teach this next sister, the younger sisters. You got to, these sisters in this community is wicked as hell. We need to have these outreach. We need to go, we go to these boys and girls clubs and teach these young sisters. We got to do this, right? Watch this. Let's go, uh, last two scriptures, last two scriptures. Let's go to Maccabees, chapter 2. Maccabees, chapter 2, first Maccabees. So remember, y'all, oh, how perfect they are. The laws of God are perfect. It governs us. It makes us, uh, what do you call it? It's going to allow us to live forever. It gives us access to the kingdom of heaven. To get us in there. It gets us to allow us to sit down with Christ. With God. With our forefathers that y'all want to sit down with. Abraham, Isaac, Jesus, All of them. We gain access to that. If we apply the laws and commandments. These perfect things. But the Christian church don't want us to. And we got to cast it down. Boldly. Alright. First Maccabees chapter 2. And verse. Where am I at? Verse uh, 64. First Maccabees chapter two and verse 64. Wherefore, you, my sons, be ye valiant and show yourselves men in, in the behalf of the law. For by it shall you obtain glory. For you men out there, you got to understand, you're going to attain glory if you follow in the laws of God. And you got to be valiant. Uh, valiant uh, what do you say? The sons of God, valiant, right? You got to be, you got to be serious about this. You got to, you got to stand bold on this. Because if you're not, who going to do it? If we don't do it, who going to do it? If the Israelites don't do it, who going to do it? Especially us in the purple and the gold, Israel united in the Christ. If we don't do it, who going to do it? You got a few camps doing it, but you got a lot that's wicked as hell. Who going to push this truth? Examine that thing. Examine that. First Kings. This is the last scripture. So we pray to God, right? We know when we came in this, we had to bethink ourselves. We had to repent. 
right? So we had to pray to God, uh, supplication of heart, right? Watch this, 1 Kings chapter 8. We pray to God, right? And he said, hey, you keep my commandments. Keep my commandments and live. Just like um, we say we believe in Christ or we love Christ. You can't love Christ and not keep the commandments. It don't, it don't go together. You have to love. If you're going to love Christ, he said, keep my commandments. You got to keep the commandments, right? So let's go. First Kings, last scripture. Last scripture, Israel. Lord's where y'all was keeping up and understand. I went a little bit in history pertaining to the laws being given to us, first of all. And it made us great among the nations, right? It even allowed us to prosper, just like we read about our forefather, Joseph. It's many occasions. I just wanted to hit on that. I remember reading on that. I wanted to hit on that. But it's many occasions in the Bible where the laws allowed us to succeed, us to be successful, right? The ways allowed us, to, the other nations to see us, knowing that the, allowed us, to, the other nations to see us better than them. Knowing that we were better than them. They know it. They know we better, especially when we're applying the laws of God, right? Well, that's, that's the only way that's going to allow us to make it. First Kings chapter eight and read, we're going to read verse. Um, we're going to start at 57 and the Lord, our God with us <clears throat> and the Lord, our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And let us, excuse me, and let these my words, wherefore I have made supplication before the Lord, be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night, that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people at all times as the matter shall require. That he's going to be with us. He's going to be with us. We apply the laws of God. We, uh, us, his servants, us, his people. He going to be with us through at all times. And any, whatever it requires, he's going to be with us. Right? Watch this. Verse 60. That all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. When we apply the laws of God, other people are going to be like, that's, that's the God. Because it's got the people moving right. They don't hate each other. They ain't killing each other. They're following their, 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 what do you call it? Uh, They're being subject to the ways of the Bible, the laws of God. Those people great. Those people going to live. They, they good. They living forever. They're prospering. Just like we prospered in Egypt, just like we prospering in America right now, in our captivities, in our different captivities, we kept the laws. That remnant that was keeping the laws, we are pro we prospered. Final verse. Um, First Kings eight and verse sixty one. Let your heart, therefore, be perfect with the Lord your God, to walk in His statutes. And keep his commandments as, as at this day. So the laws, if, how are we going to be perfect? How are we going to be perfect? By walking in the statutes and commandments of God this day. That's going to make us perfect. So the title of the class, we get it. We get it. Oh, how perfect they are. The laws of God is perfect. It makes us great. Among, among all the nations and make us great. We're above them, y'all. So we got to cast down the lies that these pastors throw out. We casting it down. We got to cast it down. This that wasn't even nothing. It's many scriptures that show that the laws of God is what governs us. It makes us perfect. It keeps our minds straight. And it allows us to live amongst each other in righteousness. And then ultimately, we're going to receive the kingdom of heaven. So all praises to the Most High. Hey, 
All praises, Lord's will. This was uh, edifying class for you. And Lord's will, this get a zeal to you that, hey, we got to go teach our people. Because they've been taught lies right now, y'all. We got to teach our people. Y'all stay in the spirit. You stay faithful. Like Bishop always says, spy, study, pray, and apply. We in the end, y'all. Study, pray, and apply. Lord's will, man, we can all make it to the kingdom of heaven. All praises. Hey. Also, man, subscribe to IUIC Arkansas. You know I always got to get a shout out. Subscribe to IUIC Arkansas and Let's Talk Truth Radio. Let's get this word out, y'all. Shalom, Most High Christ. Bless. Y'all have a good morning. Shalom.